Good morning everyone, Dan with E-Bike Nation. Welcome to my channel. We're out doing a, um, not sure, 20 to 30 mile ride today and I'm riding my Magnum Metro X. It's my 26 inch e-bike. <clears throat> but we'll be hopping on the trail up here and a little traffic here we gotta navigate. Waiting on a school bus to clear here. <clears throat> well, this kiddo's almost late for school. Hope you guys have had a great week. It's been a fairly quiet week for me. Didn't get a chance to get out and ride yesterday. Had some uh, running I had to do yesterday, so figured I'd get out the day and ride. We'll be jumping on the trail here. <clears throat> Not sure exactly where I'm going today. And I've still got some squeaky brakes on this Magnum. Need to work on that. I'm also reviewing the uh, Blue Wind bike seat, which I'll show you once we uh, review the bike. Very comfortable seat. Yeah, once I review this seat, I'll go ahead and send a copy of the video to uh, Blue Wind. Maybe they can send me some other e-bikes and merch to uh, review for them. But uh, I purchased this uh, seat. I did not get it from the company free. But I did want to get out and review it as well. Highly recommended seat, and I can see why now, as comfortable as it is. Yeah, today we're riding along at about 15 and a half mile an hour. We're in uh, pedal assist three, which Magnum calls sport. This is the bike I had to take the front fender off because the clearance on the tire with the way the brackets made on the uh, fender kept rubbing against the tire so their tolerance was too close so I just took it off. So maybe Magnum can send me another fender that'll fit on this bike. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning. This is on uh, Thursday. So I figured it'd be a really good day to get out and ride. It's a little breezy, gonna get warmer this afternoon, 75 to 77 here in Southwest Ohio. Boy, I wore, but I wore my uh, long sleeves for this ride because it's a little bit chilly yet this morning. Got a little rain last night, I see.
I've got several videos coming up. I've got enough to last for the next 10 days anyway. On some videos I've already uh, edited and uploaded to YouTube. So you guys can uh, watch them for the next 11 days for sure. I'm not counting the ones that I'll do after this video. ride towards downtown today take you along uh, along a river once we get up a little ways follow that on into downtown it's pretty a scenic ride actually so we'll be doing that today I think It'll be a little longer video today. I'm not going to stop the uh, video. We'll just talk about some things coming up on my channel. Several videos that I have planned on safety and bike repairs and bike accessories, including merch. waiting on tracking number on another bike that a company sent me so that'll be coming in here probably in the next five to ten days I think again as soon as I get the tracking number But I wanted to get another review out for uh, Magnum on this bike. It's been a very comfortable bike to ride. I probably got three to four hundred miles on this by now. Still got to adjust the brakes, maybe put some better uh, brakes on here. I have cleaned them once or twice, but uh, don't have as bad a squeak as I had, but I still have a little bit of squeak. But it's not your traditional fat tire bike. Um, the tires are, I think, about 2.5 on this 26 inch bike. Not really considered a fat tire. More a uh, crossover between a fat tire and a cruiser, you may call it. Or a commuter, I call commuters and uh, cruisers pretty much the same thing. So we'll probably get uh, 16 to 18 miles in if I'm going downtown. A little bit shorter than me going up uh, along the bike trail to the river or up into Xenia, Ohio. It's, uh, that's a little longer ride, but I like this ride as well. Last time I was down this way was last Saturday and I rode up into um, Eastwood Metro Park and they had a BMX display going on with some riders doing some jumps and things like that over some ramps and that was pretty cool. I put out some shorts on that one. Watch one of them crash. You guys might want to watch that video. It's a it's a short but I've got the title on there about the poor guy crashing after he did his jump. He got right back up. I was really surprised. Well, you know, he's he's not even probably 18, 20 years old, so he didn't even get hurt. I'm sure them guys are used to falling off them bikes. And uh, there's an eight-year-old kid on one of those videos doing uh, tricks and things on the ramp. That was pretty impressive for an eight-year-old kid.
I got two different uh, vantage points today. I got both cameras going, my, both of my GoPros. I got a handlebar mount and I've got my helmet mount on today. Just something a little different. But I'll tell you, this seat is very comfortable. I've gone a couple miles now, two and a half miles, and extremely comfortable. So, shout out to Blue Wind. If you guys want a really comfortable wide bike seat, this might be what you're looking for. I've ridden different uh, brands like Giddy Up and things like that, and they're all very comfortable uh, seats, but this one, this one may take the top spot. Especially when you get older like I am. I'll be 72 in November. And, uh... I really like more of a uh, more comfortable ride. Going by the little detour up here that uh, they got the have had the bridge closed or the bike trail for almost nine months now trying to redo an overpass over the bike trail and I'll be so glad when they get that fixed Let me know you guys if my videos are helping you make a, a decision or a choice on an e-bike. I've, um, I've still got six of them in rotation. So um, tomorrow, whenever I ride next, I'll be riding a different bike. Might be this evening. I think I'll probably be riding the Juiced. And uh, I'll put that on the end screen. Um, uh, for a video that I recommend and I'll, I'll put that at the end of this video. I'll be riding the juiced Rip current s that means step through but it's my 26 by 4 inch fat tire bike and It's a great bike. It's got a thousand watt motor on it And it's got a uh, I believe a 52 volt battery on it I think 19 amp hour, I'll correct that if it's wrong. But I really like riding that bike as well. I like all my bikes. The lightest bike I got is 37 pounds, that would be my optic bike Argon. And the heaviest bike I have will be the... An, Anioki AQ177 Pro Max that bike's 110 pounds what's interesting the battery in the uh, Anioki is 30 pound battery and it almost weighs the same as one of my e-bikes that's 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 crazy see I'll be uh, putting everything in rotation here and uh, riding different bikes every day now so I get some new ones in to review, and I will. Yeah, there might be a fat tire bike coming up. The lights flashing, I'm thinking. Can't really tell yet. Nope, that is not a fat tire bike. Just a guy trying to be very careful on his uh, bike. Come almost 3.7 miles now. Very comfortable ride today.
Got these leaves really falling now. We're not far from colder weather. It's supposed to get pretty chilly here over the weekend. It's supposed to get down in the upper 40s, I believe, for a high. That's getting down there a little bit. As I've mentioned on previous videos, I will be riding all year long. Unless there's ice on the trail, you'll see me on the trail. I don't care if there's snow on the trail. I'll just get out one of my fat tire bikes and have fun. But you really got to get that when the snow just comes down because you get a lot of riders on there, it starts packing it down to where you get ice, and that's when I don't like getting out. I don't need to break a hip at my age or break a leg or something like that. This bike has got a cadence sensor, which the more I ride uh, bikes that are torque sensors, the more I like torque sensors over cadence sensors. You can get a much better workout with a torque sensor than you do a cadence sensor. Because a cadence sensor is, is definitely sensing the pressure you're putting into the bike. And uh, it adjusts the speed to uh, maximize that pedal assist level, shall we say. Where a uh, torque sensor, you have to put a lot, you have to put everything into the uh, pedals and it, it, it will calculate Again, how much power to put in, but if you want to go faster, you just need to put more pressure onto the uh, pedals, obviously. So I'm becoming a really good fan of uh, the torque sensor bikes now. I own a couple of them that's got torque sensors, and I know one of my good friends down in Florida, Richard, that's got e-bike adventures, e-bike reviews and adventures. I keep getting that wrong. Um, he got a torque sensor bike in, and he's a real fan of it now as well. Now, I know a couple other e-bike channels, like Russ is right. Shout out to him as well. I think he uh, prefers cadence sensors. So, get across the little middle section here. He's got problems with his knees and legs. I think he had a, um, a knee replacement. And he had a lot of difficulty after that. And so I think he really likes the cadence sensor bikes. Uh, just watching one of his videos. And if Russ is watching the video, he can correct me if I'm wrong. There's those hills we go up a lot. I won't do that so much anymore. Caleb likes to do it on his walkie 26 inch fat tire bike that I sold him. But he was riding that walkie and doing stuff like that, a lot of off-roading and stuff, and every bolt on his motor come loose. A lot of them fell out of the motor. So I think that's a poor design on walkie's part. Doesn't mean it's a bad bike, but. They should have paid attention to using Loctite and stuff on all their bolts before they um, ship those bikes. So I recommend to people that uh, when you assemble your bike, and even the bolts that are already assembled, make sure those things are really tight. Or you might want to put some Loctite on those bolts so they don't come loose on you. I'd hate to be riding along on a bike trail and my motor fall out of my rear hub motor. If the bolts come loose, it's probably not gonna happen, but you can definitely cause some damage to your motor. So Caleb did experience that by doing a lot of off-roading with that walkie. Again, it's a very good quality bike that uh, walkie sent me. It's got great components on the bike.
but you really need to do your due diligence and do your research on all kinds of e-bikes that are out there. They come in so many different um, price points, the quality of the bike. I mean, my Opta bike, which is my most expensive bike that was sent to me, it was $2,800. And a lot of my people on my channel thought that bike was way overpriced. Well, they don't understand the quality that was put into that bike. I mean, it's got carbon fiber front forks. It's uh, It's got skinnier, like road tires, very good tire brand as well. And it also um, has a battery that's integrated into the frame. But the the bike itself only 37 pounds for somebody that needs a really light bike I highly recommend that brand now you can get out there and look at the Trex and all the other electric bikes that are out there that are as light as that bike but I'm not sure that the quality is is put into that bike like this one so yeah I ride it every now and then it's it's a fun bike to ride around as a commuter Instead of crossing that hole over there on the bike trail, I'm just going to take the road down there. Put my turn signals on that I have on the bike and that way people can see me. I'm definitely hear the turn signals. Turn signal on again to get into the park. But yeah, I really like them turn signals, especially when you're on the road. Here's the park we're coming through where I I videoed a bunch of them BMX riders that were down here last weekend. It was pretty cool. It's a nice little park to cruise around in. I've done that before. But we're gonna take uh, the trail up to the river. <clears throat> See a guy putting his jacket on back there. It's a little bit chilly. I I dress perfectly today with my uh, bike shirt. It's lined and it's really comfortable. My son got it for me for Christmas last year. On your left. And then my son's girlfriend embroidered the bike emblem on my uh, jacket, which is really nice. I might get some wind noise once I get along this river. Kitty cat down there. Probably out looking for some food. I do a little throttling on this bike once I come to a slight incline or a hill and it really does climb right up it. Right now I'm at about 15.6 mile an hour coming up on this hill 
and I'll hit the throttle or the throttle and I'm actually climbing going up this hill to about 18 mile an hour so yeah it's got good torque to it a little bit slower ride today than I normally do we've been averaging right at 15 and a half mile an hour on the ride so far and we've come 6.5 miles and it's only about 8.4 to get downtown from my house so we only got a couple more miles to go to get down there down through here there's not much going on obviously you got the river to the right over which we'll be joining up here uh, Dayton's a population city proper now I think we're right at a, about 80,000 I'm not I'll have to double check that, but I, we have dropped so much over the years since all the General Motors plants pulled out. We lost a ton of people due to that and all the vendor companies that supplied them. All those people moved. We used to be a heavily manufactured city and now we're uh, more of a service industry. can't see the river real well over here, but we'll see it better once we get up here about another uh, half a mile maybe. But yeah, this is a nice little ride downtown. I like to take this trail because it's very quiet. There's not a lot of people on it. I don't know if you can see the buildings straight ahead. That is downtown Dayton. I grew up here and I stayed here. I live within a, less than a mile of where I grew up. We've been in our same home. Actually, it was our starter home. Now it's our finisher home. In 1977, so we never did move. We just really love our house. And now that we're getting older, we don't want any stairs. So I'm on a uh, one floor, and I got a patio enclosure that you got to step down into on the back of my house. But other than that, it, it definitely fits our needs very well. I have a two and a half car detached garage and a shed on that property as well. There's your river finally. We caught it. Always got like a wind tunnel through here. I think my uh, helmet camera timed out there, so I turned it back on, which means I've been riding about a half hour. Watch all the goose poop down through here. You'll see a lot of them when we get up around this bend, probably. You usually see them all over the trail. There's our Dayton Children's Hospital over there. Fairly new building, very nice looking building, actually. Here's where it gets a little windy.
Got some big turtles out there on them rocks. I'm surprised we haven't seen the onslaught of the geese yet. I know they haven't flown south yet for the winter. Or if they do, I'm not sure. I'm not a bird expert. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong on the comment section. What do geese do? Do they stay in the local area throughout the winter? Or do they move on to warmer climate? Somebody answer that question for me. I see a couple of them out there in the river, probably fishing. Got a couple out there fishing, it looks like, and sunning, and got another one just floating along there, and got another one there. Usually I gotta beat my horn to get them off the trail. Yeah, pretty scenic uh, coming down this way, just following the river all the way downtown. A few more geese floating around the river there. I boosted the uh, pedal assist up to pedal assist four, comfortably cruising along at 20 mile an hour. Ah, they put a uh, trail here. This is new. I'm gonna go ahead and follow this. This is different. I'm glad they did that because when you get down there, you had a real sharp angle that you had to turn to go up a hill. Well, I really like how they did this. This is new. They did a very nice job on this. I did not know they did this. They're always improving our bike trails down here without a doubt. take the city road here a little bit um, no I actually think I'm gonna follow it across there the bike trail says left here but I'm gonna go on down to the uh, I'll go across the street here we got this bump we got to get over we'll just follow this down through here new building here I'm not sure what that is over there chalk it up to progress I guess these are uh, high-end apartments down here mostly young professionals live in these a lot of people like to live downtown and live urban like this right off downtown and uh, they're expensive I know that then you got some condominiums coming up. They're even more expensive, I believe. Here's where I would be coming up. As you can see the trail, I would be coming up and having to make a sharp left turn up this hill to get where I'm at now. So they have changed that. Now they just need to correct the bumps back here, the curbs, where that smooths that out for people who just go across the road. Due to safety reason, they may not be doing that.
On your right. Going down under the little bridge here and we'll go up into an area they call Riverscape. Won't be long, they'll be putting ice in there for ice skaters throughout the winter months. Yeah, they got a lot of festivals down through here throughout the uh, summertime and this is where I really wanted to put a food blessing box, but the city would not let me do that or they never responded back. I guess they think they don't want that type of people hanging out down here. It's only people that are hungry, so I don't understand that, but they're allowed to get down here and get drunk and drink beer and all that in the festivals, but it's not okay to put a food blessing box. Got a problem with that one. So we just started a um, food pantry at our church, got our 501c nonprofit certificate in place. And uh, so we're doing it from there, actually doing another food outreach. I've been a member of food outreaches for 20 some years, mostly mobile outreaches. So um, I got a little experience in doing them. And it's one of my passions as an e-biker to fill these blessing boxes that are on the bike trails so yeah here we are downtown Dayton we'll get uh, a little bit of a uh, video up here the river and uh, then I'll get off and talk about the bike a little bit and we're gonna do that right up here the guy on the fat tire bike just went by down there on the trail But as you can see, that's a pretty good uh, vantage point of uh, the river here in downtown. Got a bunch of tables down there for people to sit and eat lunch. And that uh, kayaking area down there in the middle is, um, that's actually man-made. Uh, see a lot of kayakers out there in the summertime. It's pretty cool. Got a guy on the other side over there fishing, I see. A uh, good place to fish because you got that little running water coming down through then you get a lot of fish that's going to hang out in that pool of water over there that's uh beside him that's really quiet and uh yeah you can see these um these geese and thing are down here and they're out there looking for food for sure but yeah let me get off the bike here and uh, get my pedal assist off and we'll talk about this thing a little bit Okay, I kind of like this um, motorcycle style kickstand on here. It's okay. It's not great. But yeah, get this helmet off so I can talk to you about the bike a little bit. Okay, this is the Magnum Metro X. And the little emblem says, feel the power. This has got a, um, I believe this is a 500 watt on this one motor and it's also got I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly I think this is a 52 volt battery I'll correct that if I'm wrong uh, see if it says here on the other side it does not one thing I do like about it it's got a little uh, U USB port right there that's cool never have used it but it's there and uh, got your controller sitting back behind the seat and uh, this bike has also got a nice display on it. And your pedal assist go from uh, eco to tour to sport to turbo to boost. That's the highest level, which would be pedal assist five. And um, we've come 9.1 miles. That might be off a little bit. My Strava app's gonna probably show a little less. And uh, it's also got a uh, twist gear shift here, which is kind of unique I can take them either way with the with the little uh, buttons that you push or 
levers or either way works fine for me i don't usually change gears too much anyway no way when i'm riding this has got um not fat tires as i mentioned i think these are about 2.5 on the size i think it's got 180 millimeter rotors on it it does have hydraulic brakes they're called clarks still got to get a squeal out of there but yeah and um again it's got a thumb throttle here right here and it's also um it's got the frame or the battery that is uh, built down in the frame i like this and uh, take it out and charge it you just take that lever out after you uh unlock with the key and you can take the battery off the bike or leave it on when you're charging it and um other than that i mean the wire management i did wrap a bunch of wires here because they were just kind of hanging loose i didn't like that but i liked how they plugged this in up here that's pretty cool it's got uh decent pedals on it they're plastic but they're, they're comfortable and uh, that's a little bit about the bike itself it will do about 26 to 27 mile an hour um as far as the speed so it's not a really fast bike, but it's 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 it'll get up there. Uh, one other thing I do like, this is what I talked about in my videos. All bike companies need to put this bracket over the derailleur. That way you are not, if you turn this bike over, you're not tearing that derailleur up. I did that on my side rusher Komodo. I am a definitely a proponent of these brackets. A way you're not tearing that thing up. But yeah, it's a pretty good uh, built bike here. Now I want to thank Hank for, um, I think his last name is Rubenstein, for sending this bike to me from Magnum. I've had it probably three to four months now, and I, I get out and ride it quite often, but I'll be showing him, sending this video as well. Let's talk about the accessories I have. This is the new seat I just put on it, and boy, is it comfortable. It's called a Blue Wind. Um, I'm going to send a video of them as well. This is a very, very comfortable seat they put on this that I put on this bike. A couple other things that I purchased after market is I have these cup holders. I really like these Kim, Kimi Motos. I'll have that down in the description box. I actually put this bag on. These are called Paneers. Uh, the bike rack did come with the bike along with, um, I think these are metal fenders actually on this one. It's also got part of the bike where I forget it is um, just front suspension, pretty comfortable but uh, does not have uh, rear suspension on this bike. Now, um, the other thing I put on here, I love these mirrors. I put these on all my bikes. Uh, I like these little Bluetooth speakers I put on there. This is up in the cockpit area. And this is my GoPro camera that's still going right here. And uh, yeah, that way I can get a couple vantage points of it. GoPro 11, say hi to the GoPro 9. And I also put in these turn signals that you can take this off if you want to uh, set this bike, the alarm and everything on it. But look at these turn signals. You can see how bright they are. And the right turn signal, and you just push the button again to stop it. But the right turn signal even sounds just a little bit different. But I really like those when I'm riding uh, in a downtown situation like this. Uh, you really need turn signals. And that, that's another thing I'm a proponent of that a lot of these companies put in um, turn signals on all these bikes. It's got a nice brake light on this before I forget it. But them are just uh, a couple of things. I see my seat's just a little crooked there. I'll straighten that out. A few things that I put on the bike here as an accessory. I've also got alarm separate alarm put down here all my bikes have air tags on them i hide them very well so I, I, I that way i can track a bike if it ever gets stolen but anyway um that's a little bit about the magnum metro x if you guys got any questions put it down in the comment section and uh let me know what you think about the bike but yeah share like Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, and I will see you guys on the next video.